Hi everybody, I'm Kiki from Sweden, the Honest Perfume Reviewer. I have been working full-time for now for quite a while, that's why I haven't been posting that much um, as I would like to, and I don't really have the same amount of content either because I can't really spend the time to kind of like... What I'd like to give you in the, on this channel is something that I've at least thought a little bit about and not just kind of um, say something just to say something, if you know what I mean. Um, but I've really enjoyed like picking out fragrances to go to work and I find that now like someone is actually, you know, on the receiving side or I can, you know, I can wear something and uh, feel a certain way when I'm going to do something special and I, I find that really fun. And now I, it's fun to, to choose different, that, I've been at this workplace like all winter um, and now we're kind of in, we've had a little hot spell here in Sweden, now it got a little bit colder again, but le now we're at least in, in summer. Um, which makes me crave a, maybe a different kind of fragrance, usually. Not always. I, I am kind of a year-round fragrance kind of person. Like, there's nothing in my collection, I think, that would be completely off-limits summer or winter. But I don't I usually reach for the same fragrances when it's warmer outside. Uh, and I just thought I'd, uh, this is like really unstructured. I thought I would just tell you a little bit about what I've been wearing, what I've been up to. A few weeks ago, I think it was, was it last weekend? God, I can't even remember if it was last week or the weekend before that. It was a little, we had a little like perfume expo, like a fair, where um, there were quite a few like fragrance houses represented and also some like web shops, um, like a Danish play. What do they call Something Beauty. They have all these, I mean, it's like a house of brands. They had all kinds of brands with them. They brought Goldfield and Banks. They had, um, God, I forget all these. Uh, oh, one that was actually interested was this... Um, what was it called? Uh, God, I forget the names. I, we also met like an Icelandic house called Fischersund, uh, where they, their fragrances are all kind of inspired by the Icelandic landscape. And I've never been to Iceland, <clears throat> although it's actually pretty close to Sweden and we have kind of, we share a heritage. There's a, there's like, our languages are a little bit similar. It's not like I could understand Icelandic, but they're sort of related. Um, and they were super nice, these people. Uh, and they, I love their design and everything, but they gave, they gave me a sample. I already actually gave it away, but I'm going to tell you about it. It was called, uh, cause it wasn't my style really. And I have something similar that, that, uh, I prefer. So it was kind of a smoky fragrance called number 23. I think these are on Fragrantica, so you can actually check them out. Um, but I found that it was like, it was a little bit piney. It was a little bit floral. And then there was like a smoky incense note in there. It went a little bit too smoky on me, but it reminds me of um, a fragrance that I've talked about on the channel previously called um, Histria from Wesker. Uh, it's a brand, like a Croatian brand. I think they work out of Munich, but the, the two perfumers that run the show are, I think, either they're both Croatian or they're like from Eastern Europe somewhere. Um, but I really like uh, Histria. It's a very piney and floral fragrance, lots of orange blossom, and then it has pine, and then it does have a little bit of smokiness underneath, kind of like an incense base, but I'm not sure that's listed. But I, I found that these two are so similar that I, I might as well just pass on um, this sample. They gave out really generous samples. I think they were like three, four mil or something. Uh, they look big. And I was just going to a friend's graduation. I've been to two graduation parties uh, this week. And um, one of my old like best friends, her daughter graduated. And I put together like a little goodie bag for her with like decants and some of these like sniffs. We call them sniffs. They're, they're from this company called Sniff. If you're uh, in the UK listening, you can buy from them. They have like a, you know, like a subscription service. You get eight milliliter per month, I think. And you choose a category and they send you like monthly they also sell them individually, but S-N-I-P-H, it's spelt. So I had a few of those sniffs, and I had some, some uh, samples and a little, uh, little tiny stuff, you know, and I, I put it in a little bag, and I, and I just wanted to collect something. I think it's a great way to clear out. And then I think there were like 10 fragrances in there, so there's plenty of her for her to try. Um, then I also... Um, bought, I'm, I'm actually shocked myself because I've been such an anti, uh, Mansara, Mansara, uh, person. I've really, really not liked this brand at all. Cause I think, I think their fragrances are really like super, super sweet and loud in a, in a kind of not very nice way. 
but something about like there were these kind of cool young guys from southern Sweden with this kind of cute accent they were working there and they were just uh, they were selling this partial that was a tester bottle and I got it pretty cheap and it's called this one's called velvet vanilla I think it's been out for a while um Actually, I don't know when I'll ever wear this. This is really like a people pleaser. It's kind of like sweet, fruity, floral. Um, the name is misleading. I don't think it's a vanilla fragrance at all. Let me see if I took some notes on this. Did I do that? Um, actually, I haven't even worn this properly yet. But it's kind of a... I just thought I'd give them a chance since they were selling it like this. And I just thought right then, because I was smelling all these odd perfumes, that it smelled really good. Um, because it's just like really, really easy, kind of like, you know, easy music when you've been listening to maybe really challenging music for a while and you're just finally just put something on that, you know, you recognize and it's just, it's just digestible. And I kind of got that impression from this. So I'll get back to you on if, if it gets worn or not, otherwise it'll be perfect for my daughter. She'll love this. Then I also bought from them, they were selling decants. I think they're kind of a decant, um, it's called, I, I'm not sure, I think if you're, if you're listening from Sweden, it's called Dofts, D-O-F-T-S, their website. I think they sell decants. And I bought another one from Mansara. I think they had other brands as well. They do sell other brands, even designers, I think, uh, decant-wise. I'm not sure they, they sell everything full bottles, but um, maybe they only sell decants. Maybe that is their thing. I'm not even quite sure, but they sold me this and it wasn't very expensive. It's called Indian Dream. And this is not a new fragrance either. Uh, to me it was. And it's it. this one kind of is like a like a really wet, uh, hot, not hot, is it called hot house? You know, like a like a where you grow flowers, like a flower shop. When you, the feeling when you come into a flower shop and it's like really dewy, uh, kind of watery. It's kind of watery in a real fresh way. Um, this this is nice. I mean, this is a little bit like a little bit like beige from Chanel. You know that same kind of watery, really floral shop kind of. Uh, this one's almost falling down, Leslie. Um, these are pretty designery, actually. I don't know if I'll wear this. They're they're kind of sweet. Maybe that will have to go to my daughter too. I was just kind of I wanted to buy something, but I did actually buy something that I'm really happy with that I kind of had planned. Um, that we have a Swedish perfumer, her name is Ellen Dahlgren, and she um, previously had given me like a, like a bigger sample of her, these are her two first fragrances that have come out, they're called The Ruler and The Jester, and um, they're all kind of based on Jung's archetypes, and uh, she's releasing them two at a time, and the only f two that have come out so far are The Ruler and The Jester, and I finally bought a bottle of The Ruler. Um, it's the you see kind of the label she's kind of starting out by herself doing a lot on her own this one's a little bit crooked but I think it's kind of charming with these um you know people starting out really doing their thing and it smells like it's like really really tonka it, uh, it's it's powdery tonka it reminds me a little bit of arbole from here in green so it's patchouli tonka but it also has this kind of like grassy top like it's grass rhubarb um, what else is in here? Um, probably some woody notes, maybe. It's a little bit like Ani, um, but this is a much, much easier wear. And I've worn like three milliliters of it. I've worn it quite a few times, so I, I knew that I liked it, and she had a special price at this expo. So I, I kind of, this was kind of a, a planned purchase. For 50 mil, this size, um, it was 1,600 crowns, which is about could be like $150. Uh, let me see. God, I can't even figure it anymore because it used to always be like the euro was 10 Swedish crowns and now it's like 1190 maybe or something. So it's a little bit complicated, but it's it's not cheap, not cheap. Um but it's not the most expensive in my collection either. I have actually worn this is my most expensive bottle now. Uh it's called Oud Maximus from Bortnikov and it's not it's funny. I don't find this so oudy anymore. I've worn this in the, in the hot weather, and um, I mean the oud is in there in the background, but this is more of a like a sheep bread. It's kind of like a Guerlain fragrance. It's soapy. It's like it feels kind of like an old classic, but in a sort of a modern way. It's I don't know what I can compare it to. I'm still kind of getting to know this fragrance. They're you know they're kind of famous for this is this guy from Thailand. I don't know if he just lives there or if he is from there. Um, but it's supposed to be like all natural ingredients. Of course, there's no way of really knowing. Um, they use real musk, 
they have some kind of exception to this rule, like that real musk can't be used because they have these like special individual animals and they take the musk. Maybe they use the meat or use the fur. I don't, I don't really know, but I, I, there's a story behind this. It's, um, I don't know, this is a little difficult. I don't wear this out that much. I wear it mostly at home if I'm like working around the house. It's kind of expensive for that, but um, it, it's good. This is, I, I, I enjoy it. Sometimes I like wear it like at night, like just a little bit. Then, um, I'll, I'll tell you with another fragrance that I bought secondhand is also kind of one of these, not homemade, but it's kind of like a small house. And this is, this particular bottle is a limited edition and it's signed. Um, it was given, or my friend bought it. So it says for Helen. Um, but I guess she didn't reach for it so much. So I've taken it over. It's called Vonninger from o Oliver and Company. And they might have changed the name of the actual perfume house, but the, the fragrance is, it, they still have it. Maybe it under a different name. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but you can still see this on Fragrantica, Vonninger. It might, there might be like two pages, but it is the same fragrance. It's kind of a, uh, this also has a little bit of a resemblance with Ani. Um, it's kind of like lemon, ginger, vanilla. There's something in here that kind of smells like a little bit like toothpaste. It's a little minty. Maybe that is from the ginger. It's really special. My, my son actually reaches for this quite a lot since I, I just picked it up like a couple weeks ago and he wears this all the time now. It's, it's a nice summer fragrance. It's, um, I recommend it. It might be hard, a little hard to get a hold of. I'm not quite sure where you would get it, but maybe, and I'm not really even sure where, where this Oliver is from, um, but it's called Von Ninger anyway. Then I've worn, so I surprised myself by wearing mm, this, Sorry, I forgot to have something in my, in my teeth. Um, Meander, this, there's a, it's supposed to have a little thing here. It's like a tester bottle. So it's, it's not, I, was try, I tried to sell it actually because I don't reach for it that much. Because um, I'm having another perfume meetup. If any of you are planning on visiting Sweden that are listening, uh, you know, write to me and uh, I can invite you. It's going to be on the 16th of June uh, at 2 p.m. for like three hours. And I think there were like, there are like 10 of us signed up now and we, we get together, we sniff each other's perfumes, we sometimes swap and buy and sell and uh, you bring what you want and it's just kind of fun. And if any of you are planning like to visit Sweden and you might want to do it uh, during uh, the summer and this you know works for you, it would be great if you wanted to join us. Um, we speak English, it's no problem if, I mean, and if you don't speak English, it doesn't even matter because if, if we're sniffing fragrances, we, we can just, we can still communicate or we can use some kind of Google, Google translate maybe. But I, I haven't really, this is kind of a real sandal woody fragrance with a little bit of a fig touch to me. Uh, I don't think fig is listed here, but it really is kind of like a Santal 33, which I don't even like, but it's kind of, I think that many would find it a little bit similar to that. It's also a little bit similar to Santal Austral from, from, um, Mattia Premier, I think they're called. Um, oh, by the way, my brother just sent me this text today because I gave him my little, I had a little six milliliter mini from, from uh, Mattia Premier, Falcon Leather. And he said he'd really fallen in love with this fragrance. That's a really loud fragrance. Like it's so loud, like a, a heavy leather fragrance. I think you, have, you can only wear like a little tiny squirt, but I was happy that he was wearing it. Um, that's great fun. But this, it, it's nice, but I don't really... It's a little floral too. I just don't, I don't know. I'm, I just, I'm too busy with other fragrances to actually give this priority. It's not, it's good, but it's not great, I would say. A fragrance that is great, however, that I wore the other day, I wore it to two different events, or events, I don't know. I was, I went on a date with this guy for lunch on a really sunny day. And I kind of wanted to make an impression. Um, I kind of, I don't know why I chose this fragrance because it's a little bit bold, especially on a hot day. This was kind of hot day and we were kind of placed at a table in the sun. I mean, it wasn't, it was like maybe 20, 25, 26 Celsius, which is a little hot for the sun. Uh, although, I mean, if you are like from, from Southern Italy or something, you probably don't think that's hot at all. Um, but, but I wore uh, Journey from Amouage, Journey Woman, which is a really kind of a heavy wear, but I think it really, really bloomed in the sun. I, I really felt like I was heading on out on a date. I felt like really feminine and really kind of, 
I wasn't, I was wearing a pair of jeans and nothing special, but like with the fragrance, like it was really kind of manifesting that I was going on a date. I don't think this guy was for me. I mean, I really liked him, but he was like a kind of a, sail, a sailing boat kind of guy and who loves to spend all his time in nature and different, like different, uh, he was going to sell his, uh, his row house and, and, and buy an apartment just to, so he could buy a bigger boat. That kind of tells you a little bit. And he was going to be out all weekend, um, all weekend and sail. And he said that if he, if he want, if I wanted, I could come out and have dinner with him Sunday night because he was going to, but it would be like, for me, like an hour drive out there. And my daughter's coming home on Friday. I don't know. And I just felt like, and he suggested we could meet like next week. And I just kind of, I'm not this kind of person. I don't really like sailing even. And when would we ever meet? Um, I'm kind of more of a, you know, like read and write kind of person. I like to consume, consume culture. Uh, I like to sniff perfume. I like to, you know, hang out in town with friends and I love dancing. I go dancing all the time, like well, at least once a week. Um, and I don't want to spend all my weekends like out in the archipelago. Um, I would love to do some like hiking. That was some common ground that we found that I would really, really enjoy. I'd, I'd like day hikes, maybe go to some beautiful area and, you know, explore, um, on foot that I think that would be great, but, but, um, spending all my time on a sailboat, oh God, that would be for me. Um, and it kind of leaning and it's, you have to do all these ropes and I just, I, I've just never, I'm not grown up with it. And I, I mean, a lot of Swedish people sail, but I, I'm not into it. Sorry. Now I kind of veered off track here. Great fragrance. Then later I went, uh, I did, I did lots of gardening because, oh yeah, I'll just inform you a little bit about where I'm at with my house. I'm giving it another try to sell the house and to move to a new place. So I was kind of getting ready. We were taking outdoor photos and I was kind of trying to weed around uh, around the house because it's it's looking really bad. And I was so hot and so dirty, so I had to shower. And then at night we were going to this graduation. So I ended up refreshing my already good fragrance um, after my shower and I wore this again to the graduation. And I felt like a million bucks again. Um, such a good fragrance. This is this was. I love this, and I'm not even an, an osmanthus person. I should tell you a little bit of what it smells like, right? It's kind of an. I don't know. It's it's kind of like a typical amouage. It, it's it's good, heavy, feminine. I mean, a man could definitely wear this, but it's like osmanthus heavy. There might be some like tobacco and saffron in here, but it's fl really floral. Um, I don't have the notes in my head. Or have I? Did I write this down? Wait a minute. No, I didn't. I just wrote down that I wore it. So it's so kind of my level of ambition. I used to like every day, every morning when I put on a fragrance, I would get my, you know, my little notebook out and I would write down like all the notes, the perfumer, the year it came out. Sometimes I would like write down which ones were similar or what other fragrances the perfumer had made uh, so that I could tell you about it. And also, you know, to, to, to learn myself, the best way of learning is telling other people about it. Right. Um, I just wore, I just wrote down that I wore it. Then to work yesterday, yeah, it was yesterday. Then I wore New Look, which I actually am a little off this fragrance. New, no, it's not the new New Look. There's a new, there's a new look that's come out that's only called New Look. This is New Look 1947 that is discontinued from Christian Dior. It's exclusives. Um, this has like been one of my favorite fragrances, but now I kind of find it's a little bit too sweet. Maybe a little too, it's a little boring. I mean, Amouage, uh, Journey Woman is really sweet too, but it's heavier. I find it more interesting. It's kind of like there's something to kind of back up the sweetness, but this one is like, and the, the longevity is not that great. What happened here? Um, this one, I've had a problem with the longevity, but now since my, I've had a really heightened sense of smell since I started working. And one of you guys, I should remember, you should take your name because I thought this was such a nice input to get because I, I would never have thought of this myself. Um, was that I have this, you know, like I smell everything more. I find that the perfumes last longer. And I think it was a she, was it a she that said it to me? Uh, was that I'm, I'm kind of like on my, um, a little bit on guard because I'm in a new environment. And this is kind of a survival kind of thing that your, your senses get heightened. And maybe that is what's going on, but it's very nice because I can, I can, I can feel more. I can sense more. So I'm getting much more out of my fragrances. Another fragrance that I'm kind of a little bit like, it has been one of my very, very favorites, um, is Artemisia from Penhaligans. And this one I find, 
you know, it, there's a plastic note in here that is, I forgot to say that this, um, the ruler has, it also has a little bit of a plastic industrial touch to it. And my son, he's, he's got a pretty good nose. You know, he'll pick up on things like that. He said that this smells, it, I mean, this was like at first spray. I don't think it was the dry down he was smelling, uh, or was it? Or maybe it was he just put his nose to the top. He said, it smells like when you get a new book at school and you open it up for the first time and that smell hits you of like a new printed copy of a book. Um, and he's right. There's something there that does give that vibe. Um, something like paper-ish with print. Or it, there could be even maybe be described as something a little bit industrial. Something a little bit plasticky or rubbery or... Um, but I really like it and I've loved, although I have always detected the, the plasticky note in Artemisia, uh, it kind of started to bother me a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to spray it right now just to kind of refresh my memory. This is like a really nice, uh, floral musk with a little vanilla in the base. It has green apple, I think in the top, maybe some bergamot. Um, it's, it is good. It has a real butteriness underneath. It's really luxurious, but that plastic note does bother me a little bit. So this one, I'm like, I'm not gonna be, I don't think I'll repurchase it, but it has been one of my very favorite fragrances. Or maybe it was just last time when I, when I, um, um, when I pulled it out, I didn't like it so much as I usually do. I mean, I still like it, but it's a really easy wear. And it always works, and therefore, I mean, I like to have it in my collection. I just don't, like, I'm not going wild about it. So my taste is, is completely, it's changing a lot. Okay, I want to tell you about a few more fragrances. Well, here's actually a cheapy recommendation. Uh, and it's, it's called, I did, I think this one I also passed on to my, my friend for graduation. Because it just, it was just a little squirt. It was a couple milliliters in a decant. And I have similar fragrances, but um, it's a really nice cheapy amber and it's called it's discontinued but you can maybe you could find it it's from the house of gres you know g-r-e-s with a hyphen going backwards um and it's called eta de gras um and it came out in 2017 and maybe it wasn't very long on the market i don't i don't know but it was like 20 30 bucks i think i saw and i saw people were discussing it that it was such a steal but it has like uh, rosemary violet and bergamot in the top cinnamon and two kinds of rose. It said rose and Bulgarian rose, and then amber, labdanum, patchouli in the base. And it was such a nice light amber, kind of like um, a little bit similar to Ambra Calabria from Nishane and a little bit similar to Dajala from, from Zerjov. Um, those are a little bit more floral perhaps, but I, I really like that amber because it was kind of like a amber you could just wear it in the summer. It wasn't like heavy like an Le Lyon from Chanel or anything like that. It was like a really easy wear with an ambery kind of undertone. Um, Eta de Grasse. I'm going to put this in the, in the, um, you, you'll see my list of perfumes that I've mentioned today. Um, I put it in the notes, but you don't have it on the screen. It's kind of, I, I don't have a very high ambition now for this channel, but I do want to share and I do want to kind of keep in touch with people with similar interest. I think it's great fun. Then I did try a fragrance from, did I, did I pass that on to her? I think I did, did too, because it was nothing that I really, there's a, there's a, a house from Thailand and it's called Strangers Parf Parfumerie. Um, and a, a fragrance called Kira Kira. Um, it came out in 2020 and I, I'm not, I mean, I've heard a lot about Strangers, but I haven't tried a lot from them, but this was a very kind of it was inspired by, I think, Japanese uh, summer or Japanese culture or something. And it was really like, um, I mean, the, the Far East, like um, like China, Japan, Korea, all those countries over there are kind of known for wearing super light fragrances. Um, my friend that just got home from Japan, she went to Japan just a few months ago. And she said when she came home, she could really tell like that Swedish people smell completely different than Japanese people. Like we walk around smelling like Ambroxan, basically. That's what she said. Um, they're much more um, discreet. 
in what they wear. And this one is a real discreet fragrance. But this had Ambroxan. It had like pear, green apple, solar notes, lily of the valley, um, ambrette, white lily. So it was kind of like a little bit floral. There was a tiny, I couldn't catch the boozy touch. But I saw other people writing about the sake. Like a, there's this Japanese drink. If it's hard liquor or wine, I don't know. Um, but it, it was definitely really like minimalistic and like a like kind of like a skin scent. Kind of like Le Labo's Another 13 or like a, almost like a molecule type of fragrance. And it's not my thing really. So, so I decided to pass that on. But it was fun to try it. <clears throat> Let's see if I have anything else to... Oh yes, oh yes, there's one. Um, I ended up giving this one away too because I don't think I'll wear it. Somebody gave me, I think I've done a previous video on this, gave me like a whole shoebox full of decants and samples and um, lots of different like these little sniffs and um, and in this box there was a sniff and it's called from Liquid Imaginaire. It's called Melancholia and I didn't like it when I tried it in the winter and then someone said you just have to hang on to those drops and try it again when it's warm and it, this was like one of the hottest days so far this summer and I thought okay here's the day when I wear this. Um, and I'll give you the notes first. It, 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 it's mint, lemongrass, cardamom, ginger, bay leaf, musk, and suede. And it has a lot of mint. And I almost got like a cannabis feeling from this. Um, really, really green. And kind of something... I don't know, is there vetiver? No, there's no vetiver. I kind of got like a vetiver... Lots of mint and lemongrass and then more green things going on in there. Uh, it's just not my thing. Like I, I think it was well made. It was. It's not a bad fragrance. If you're into that kind of thing, maybe try it. But like, it was compared to a lot of other fragrances. So I don't think it's super, super unique. But somebody said that she, she I think it was a she, really, really enjoyed it. Like in the hot weather, it came out in 2020, and the perfumer is Amélie Bourgeois. Bourgeois. I think she's French. Um, and then. There, I tried one more. This one, I, I, um, she was. There's a house called Mar Maria N N J I E. She's Swedish, and she, uh, but she works in London. And her, this is her brand, Maria Nia, her name, her own name, and she has a per perfume called Vanille, like vanilla. Um, that I, that is, it's, it's good, it's good. But I did pass it on because I found it like so, kind of non-unique. It has cardamom, cedar, vanilla, musk, amber, and patchouli. And it's it's nice, but I have like Rosendo Mateo number seven. This I don't think it was so vanillic, really. It reminds of many other ones, a little bit masculine. Um, maybe it's a little similar to Oduel from um, Diptyque, maybe. Not sure. But I think that like Rosendo Mateo number seven has like oud, patchouli, vanilla. This has no oud, but um, it's kind of a little bit of a spicy. I just didn't, it didn't excite me that much. Uh, but I, that's not saying that I don't recommend it. I mean, I think it's a good fragrance. I just, uh, it's not really for me. I don't really, these vanillic, I don't know. Not so excited about it. Then I've been wearing a little bit Manic Love. I left the bottle downstairs. I could have showed it to you. It's a discontinued though, Swedish house. It's called... Neo tantric fragrances, um, and um, I don't know if these people were into this tantra thing or tan tantra. I don't know how you even pronounce it in English, um, but um, there's all kinds of like sexual things on the bottle, and they have a for her and for him, and it's called the manic love for her and for him. And this is the for him version. And oh, I got to tell you about another fra a really really good fragrance. Uh, because both of these, that the one I'm going to tell you about and this manic love for him, um, are compared, they get compared to Diorome Dior, Intense, which is kind of powdery, like an iris powdery fragrance. Um, uh, I don't think that this manic love man even has iris, but it has, it has violet and it has that same kind of powdery feeling, a little bit sweet. I think it's maybe a little bit too sweet. But um, I've been wearing it. I wore it when, when it was slightly colder, before it got really hot. And I do, oh, here, I have the notes. To it. Let's see. No, no, and exactly, no iris. But cardamom, green leaves. It has kind of actually some similar notes to the, the vanilla that I was just telling you about from Marianilla. Um, oh, yes, the one I really want to mention that also gets compared to the Arom Intense, but I don't think that they are that similar, is... 
a really great yet expensive fragrance that I bought a decant from my friend. I didn't bring it out now, or did I? Yeah, I did actually. This is such a good fragrance. Um, it's called uh, Numero Uno uh, from Adamo. I think it's Italian, I'm pretty sure. And the bottles are like kind of covered. They're, I think they're like black and white and there's some design on, on they're kind of square. But this, the dry down of this is, it's kind of a rose fragrance, like a rose, a masculine leaning, or it's unisex, I would say. Unisex lean, le unisex leaning. How does that sound? <laughs> it's, it's unisex, um, but a man could wear this. It's powdery. It's, um, it's so good. It, it, it's really good when it dries down. Now it's a little bit like I, I can still feel the alcohol. It has quite a lot of rose, and I don't love rose usually, but this is an exception because it's so nice and powdery. I'm guessing there might be tonka in here, or um, maybe there's some a little bit tart fruit in the top or something. It's so nice when it dries down. There might even be oud in here. Now I can't even remember. I think I have the notes for this, actually. Let's see. This is a really good one, Numero Uno. It's, it's actually one of the best fragrances that I've talked about today. Uh, let's see here. Um, I wore this a while back. Numero uno. Yeah, it was, it's one of my most recent bought decants. Um, I know I had it here. Yeah, here it is. Okay, rose and rum in the top. Uh, raspberry, violet. Okay, there's where the tartness comes from, maybe. Raspberry and violet in the mid. Cedar and patchouli in the base. I would have guessed there was tonka. It's, it's maybe a little bit, I mean, it's pretty sweet, but I wouldn't, I don't think it's a raspberry. I don't find it like a fruity fragrance. I find it more like a Diorome kind of fragrance, but it's so good. I love this. And at the same time, I also bought a decant of, that, I've, that I've almost finished a decant since I got it like just six weeks ago. And it's called, I think I mentioned this in a previous video, L'Air and Leros. 31.1 by Pierre Guillaume, the house Pierre Guillaume. Um, it, it has like powdery notes, lilac, tonka, white chocolate, and cacao. And it's so, so good. It's really quiet and it doesn't last that long, but it's so good. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's powdery, it's light, it's beautiful, it's airy. Uh, such a good fragrance. Um, Oh, numero uno is only it has only twenty votes, but it got it got at four point six. I mean, it could be all people working there. So I'm not even. I'm sorry. I'm not even going to tell you what how many votes it has because I think that that the grade is a little bit misleading. Probably it could mean anything, but it is really good. And of course, the price point has to be considered. This is a really expensive fragrance. I can't remember exactly how much, but we're talking like several hundred dollars for fifty mil, and it's or was it a hundred? Maybe they only even sell them in a hundred mil. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to try to like maybe post a little more than just monthly. I think it was, it was like a whole month ago since I talked to you last, but I'm doing okay. Um, but it's, it's, I have to tell you a little bit more about my job situation. Some things have happened, but I think it's for another video. And that's not really what this video, this channel is about. It's about perfume, but um, I've been dating. Uh, so I'm kind of like, and I'm also move, maybe moving. So I'm kind of like in that, you know, uh, kind of like in between kind of the, that kind of situation and about my work I, I just feel that it is not maybe the right place for me um, I've actually uh, resigned but I have like a three-month notice period and I'm gonna work until the end of August but now they asked if I could be the moderator of this conference in early September and so I'm thinking you know I'm 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 kind of shifting what I'm doing at work and it's more fun, so maybe maybe something will show up, you know, like someone will quit, or I could do other things there, or I'm not quite sure, but this like IT and tech to be a consultant, like a management consultant, and that it's it's so difficult. Um, and I felt like they I, they didn't have the greatest onboarding process for me, like that wasn't from the industry, so it's been kind of hard. But um, we're on good speaking term, we're on good terms, and. I think, you know, like losing my husband early, like he died when he was 45, has made me more like, I really, really don't want to waste my time. Like if I don't feel like this is for me, I'm not going to waste time. Um, because I, I know my days could be counted as well. I could get sick tomorrow. I, you know, nobody really knows. And I don't really want to, um, 
if I sell my house, I can get some money from there and um, figure something else out. So I'm really not in a desperate position. It would be better if I could, you know, sell, finally sell the house. But times are really hard now. And I mean, Sweden's not doing so well. Our crown is so weak. So wherever we travel in the world, it everything is super expensive. There are some exceptions. I heard like that going to Japan was really cheap when it comes to like food and skincare. I'm not so sure about perfume, but it was kind of different. But like if we go to the States, it's super expensive now. If we go down south in Europe, it's super expensive now. Like when I was young, ev everywhere we went was really, really cheap compared to our own country. Um, and now people come here. Like we just had Taylor Swift here and she had three concerts, one Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. And they were all sold out. And um, a lot of people, I think it was like, was it like half or 40% came from abroad to get tickets because it was so cheap. Even Amer for Americans, it was cheaper to buy t a plane ticket to Stockholm and get a Taylor Swift ticket than to go when she was, you know, played in the States. So uh, that was like a huge happening over here. And I, have, I hardly know who she is. I mean, I've, of course I've heard the name and I've heard, you know, some of the hits and stuff, but she's so big. And it was such, a, like, I, when I listen to her, I just feel like nothing. And I don't know, why don't I get this girl? I mean, I think it's great that, that you know, people look up to her and um, think she's incredible. But I just don't get it. Uh, but I wasn't there. So maybe you have to be there. Please, if you guys are Swifties, if you're fans, please let me know, like, what, what's the big deal? Because I don't really know. But um, anyway, that was all for today, guys.